So thus far in this course, I've been talking about all the challenges in thinking and decision making that lie in the shadows. But I believe it's important to know one's foe before determining best how to vanquish it. In this case, we're looking to eliminate as best possible emotion, subjectivity, a tendency to choose what we already know or perceive, and to move beyond looking for evidence that supports what we want to hear. Instead, we want to be able to increase our objectivity and increase our ability to develop options and recommendations based on sound reason. The first technique I'll cover is effective in supporting critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making. It's called the eighth step decision making or problem solving process. When I first learned of it several years ago, I was a little skeptical of its effectiveness. In the years since, however, I've been involved in rapid improvement events as a participant and facilitator and can vouch for its effectiveness in supporting decision making. The technique is linked closely with another decision tool, the OODA loop, which stands for observe, orient, detect, and act. The OODA loop, also known as the decision cycle, was originated by Colonel John Boyd, a military strategist. Combined with the eight-step process, you have a great framework to guide your thinking and decisions. The eight-step process looks like this. In step one, you clarify the problem. In general, we're faced with four types of problems. Something is broken, how do you fix it? Is there opportunity to make something better? If so, how do you improve it? Why did something happen? Find the answer. A new initiative will be implemented and you need to make it happen and mitigate or handle any problems that come up. It's critical to get this step right. You don't want to invest time and energy solving the wrong problem. Recognize the correct problem and be sure it's completely understood by everyone who will be involved in developing the solution. State the problem by developing a problem statement that answers the questions of what, where, when, who, why, how, or the significance or impact if it's not solved. In step two, you'll break down the problem and identify the performance gap or gaps. After a problem is stated clearly, it's tempting to launch into solving it. Don't. Instead, go into data collection mode. Begin getting data, visit the site, talk with people, and collect information. The simple act of understanding what data is relevant and germane to the problem you have will be critical to your solutions being of value at decision time. You also may look for performance gaps if you're dealing with a process. Are there opportunities for efficiency or effective adjustments? What isn't working properly? Finally, you might look for constraints or bottlenecks. Is there something not occurring that is holding up meeting a schedule or deadline? Step three is set improvement targets. Answer the question, where do I or we want to be? You need to understand where you want to be in order to understand what you'll need to do to get there. It also helps you to further refine any performance gaps or constraints you identified in step two. In step four, you'll identify root causes. You likely have heard of root cause analysis already, as it's a method of problem solving many of us are exposed to during our engineering education, looking for the underlying faults or problems, not just the symptoms or the outward end results. One helpful exercise to get to the root cause of any issue is the five whys. Simply ask the question why after each answer five times. Step five is develop options. Based on the information you've collected and analyzed for the problem you've clearly articulated, what options might be implemented to bring about the improvement target needed. Consider more than just one option. My rule of thumb is to have three options available. As you develop your options, consider the practicality and quality of the option and what will be needed to gain approval from decision makers. While options are good to have, it's also valuable to analyze the alternatives for effectiveness in solving the issue, the feasibility, and the impact. In step six, you see options through. This is go time. It's when you take action by implementing the option that's selected. After implementing the desired course of action, consider measuring performance towards the desired outcome and target. This assessment will be useful in determining the efficacy of the option you selected. Step seven is confirm results and process. Nearly every action we take in the course of engineering work is a process. If you apply the eight-step technique to solve a particular problem, you'll uncover what the process is, and by measuring performance, can in this step determine if the option you implemented was correct. It's in this step that you reassess if necessary and go back to other steps to make adjustments. And finally we come to step eight, standardize the successful process. This is the most underappreciated and commonly skipped step. The time and energy invested to get to this point has value, so capitalize on it by creating standard operating procedures or SOPs for the process you just designed. The SOP becomes a script you can replicate across your firm or hand to new employees to help them onboard. 
It also will aid you in replicating the success you achieved in future similar actions.